Hi everybody, uh, Mr. Beckstrom here, and today I'm going to take a look at uh, some topics here from Section 1B. This is on propositions and truth values. Uh, so the question here is how do we evaluate uh, this uh, proposition here? And it says Q and R and S. So when do we know when this statement is true and when do we know when this statement is false? So if we look at our book, and if you don't have the actual book, you can look at the e-copy of the book in my math lab. Uh, but it says that uh, if you look at page 16 at the bottom, it says, given two propositions, P and Q, the statement P and Q is called their conjunction. It is true only if P and Q are both true. And that can be uh, expanded to uh, when you have three different variables or three different objects, that it is also only true if all of them are true. So uh, what we want to do here is we want to look at every uh, combination of true and false for Q, R, and S. That, that's a Q. It's this, uh, this font for uh, this program here isn't great, but that's a Q, that's an R, that's an S. So how do we show every combination of true and false for three different variables? Now we could just start trying to guess, like we know that there has to be a true, 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 we know there has to be a false, 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 and then, well, there's going to be a true, false, false. There's going to be a false, true, true. And we can just start kind of guessing them until we get them all, but that's not going to be very efficient. And uh, we don't know when we're going to get them all. So uh, this is really uh, the best way that, that I know how to do it. Uh, the book doesn't really give you a good way to do it either. So uh, the way that I do it is I take the number of different options you have. So we, you can either have a true or a false. So that's going to be two options. So you can either have a true or a false raised to the number of variables you have. So the number of options you have, so we can either have a true or a false, raised to the number of variables you have. We have three variables, one, two, and three. So two raised to the third power is eight. That means that we're going to have a total of eight rows. And you can do this with any set that you want. So usually, if we're just going to have um, true and false tables, it's always going to be 2 raised to some power. So if we have two variables, it's going to be 2 raised to the second power. If we have three variables, it'll be 2 raised to the third power. If we had four variables, it'd be 2 raised to the fourth power. But if we end up having, you know, three different options, for example, if something could be red, green, or blue, then you could actually change this base number to 3. But in this case, with true and false tables, you just uh, use a 2 here. So this means I'm going to have eight different rows, eight different rows. Uh, now, how do I know uh, what those rows are going to be? Well, uh, the, the method that I like to use is my first column is going to be half trues and half falses. So I'm going to go ahead and do that one first. So I'm just going to do half trues, true, 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 and then half falses. So false, false. Remember, I'm just trying to get a combination of, I'm going to try to get every combination listed exactly once. So I'm going to do half trues and half falses. And then the next combination, I'm going to divide that basically in half. Instead of half and half, instead of four and four, I'm going to do two, 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 and two. So it's going to be two trues, two falses. Two trues and two falses. So two, 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 and two. So two true true oops that's kind of a bad true there true ah that is not liking me today true true and then false 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 
and then two trues, true, true, and then false, 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 false. So your first column, you just do half trues, half falses, and then your second column, you kind of divide that in half again. So true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then your last column will always be alternating. Always be alternating. So you're just going to go true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. All right, now we have a complete uh, truth table set up. And now we have every possible combination of trues and falses uh, for three different variables. That means that we're going to have exactly one row that's all trues. We're going to have exactly one row that's all falses. And we're going to have one row of every combination that you could think of. So if you closed your eyes and you said, is there one row that's true, false, false? You would look here and you would find that there is, sure enough, one row that is a true, false, false. Um, so there's one row of every possible combination of trues and false. So this method that we just used, it's just to get every combination of trues and falses there is for three variables. And then finally, what we're doing is, we're seeing, okay, when is this statement true and when is it false? Now remember, with the AND statement, it is only true when all of them are true and it is false otherwise. So as long as any of those are false, then the entire statement is false. So let's, let's uh, make a, a real world statement uh, with that. Um, if I said to the class, uh, you will get an A in the class if you come to class on time every day and you take all of the tests and you finish all of the projects. Otherwise, you will not get an A. So in order to get an A, you have to do all three of those things. And if you don't do any of those, if you miss any of those, then you're not going to get an A. So you have to do all three of those things. All three of those have to be true. You have to come to every class. You have to do all the tests and all of the projects in order to get your A, right? So it's going to, so if you do all three of those, if all three of those are true, you're going to get an A. But if you don't do your project, you're not going to get an A. If you don't do your tests, you're not going to get an A. If you don't do your projects and you don't do your tests, you're not going to get an A. If you don't come to class, you're not going to get an A. If you don't do your uh, projects and you don't come to class, you're not going to get an A. All right. So as long as there's any of those you're not doing, you're not going to get that A. So that's what a conjunction table means. As long as, if, if any of those are a false, any of those you don't do, then it is a false. So the only way that this thing is going to be true is if each one of these is true. And that is a conjunction table. So this is what it looks like. And there is a homework question on there that is very similar to this. And this is, this is how you would answer that. And this is how you would interpret it if you were to use that as a logical equivalent. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks.